Who killed Malcolm X? Three black Muslims, members of the Nation of Islam, were convicted. But the current leader of the Nation of Islam, Louis Farrakhan, now acknowledges that words he spoke may have triggered the assassination. As I may have been complicit in words that I spoke, I acknowledge that and regret that any word that I have said caused the loss of life of a human being. Malcolm X was murdered 35 years ago in 1965. Today, the black revolutionary, once feared and misunderstood, enjoys the popularity and respect reserved for leaders like Martin Luther King, Jr. The autobiography of Malcolm X was named by Time magazine as one of the 10 most important nonfiction books of the last century. And Denzel Washington was nominated for an Academy Award for his portrayal of Malcolm in Spike Lee's film. Who killed Malcolm X? Three black Muslims, members of the Nation of Islam, were convicted. Two of them served 20 years. The third is still not free. But the current leader of the Nation of Islam, Louis Farrakhan, has long been suspected as the instigator, the behind-the-scenes force who triggered the killing. Malcolm's late widow believed that, as do his children to this day. But now, finally, Atalish Shabazz, the eldest daughter of Malcolm X and Louis Farrakhan, agreed to talk about the assassination for the first time in front of a reporter. For Shabazz, not without some misgivings. I did not know if I wanted to sit across from him. I didn't know if my heart could handle it. Didn't know if she could sit with a man she still holds responsible for her father's death. Confronting Minister Farrakhan would not be easy. And for strength, she told us, she summoned the memory of her parents. Before I came here, I prayed and included my parents. They had to walk with me to the airport. They had to get me out of that hotel and into the property here. You see, Adela Shabazz was there in the Audubon Ballroom in 1965 in New York to watch her father make a speech. She was there with her two younger sisters and her pregnant mother. And Atla, only six years old, watched as gunmen killed her father. Here's how her late mother, Betty Shabazz, described the murder. I heard shots, and I saw people crawling on the floor. I saw, and so I got down too. Then when I was looking out, and I saw um, someone um, look in amazement to the front. I knew they had shot my husband. And my children were crying, you know, what's going on? What's going on? Are they going to shoot us? I'm a child with a forever memory of the most significant man in my life standing at a podium and falling backwards. That's forever. Miss Shabazz, for several months, I carried the picture of your father with all of these bullet holes in his chest. And I looked at the man that taught me, the man that nurtured me, the man that was the example of a man to me. And I wept. His pain came from their shared history. As is well known, Malcolm was a dope peddler and street hustler. But during his seven years in prison, he was introduced to the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, considered a holy man by his followers in the Nation of Islam. And eventually, Malcolm became the spokesman for the nation, at the time preaching that the white man was evil and calling for the separation of the races. And along the way, Louis Farrakhan, a former nightclub singer, became Malcolm's student, his acolyte. And Malcolm taught Farrakhan how to live as a black Muslim. Example, Nation of Islam members don't eat pork, don't smoke, don't drink alcohol, and do not have sex outside marriage. It is worthy, if you will, of expulsion. That is correct. Adultery. That is correct. Fornication was worthy of expulsion. But in 1963, Malcolm X learned that Elijah Muhammad himself had repeatedly committed adultery with some of his teenage secretaries and had children with them. Malcolm agonized over his discovery, 
And in June of 1964, he told me about it. And he called some of these women who were living in Los Angeles at the time and let me listen to the conversation. And it became apparent that he was telling the truth. He told you about that, yes? Mm -hmm. At the same time, Malcolm was aware of other tensions growing within the nation of Islam for his popularity had begun to surpass that of Elijah Muhammad. There was a dynamic inside of the nation that troubled Brother Malcolm at the highest echelon of leadership. Well, the fact of the There matter, was envy. Okay. There was envy. Envy of Malcolm. Of Malcolm. By there you? Were, no, never by me. Never by you? Never by me. Never. I truly loved this man. Who envied him? There are those in the circle who feared mm -hmm. the kind of publicity that he was getting, the kind of attention that he was getting. He was the most vocal. He was the most loved. He was the most honored and respected. And he outshone the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. In certain areas, yes. In 1964, Malcolm X broke with the Nation of Islam to form his own organization based on orthodox Muslim principles, which include a respect for all races and religions. And how did Louis Farrakhan react? He began writing incendiary editorials in the Nation of Islam's newspaper. Let me read you what you wrote in December of 1964. The die is set and Malcolm shall not escape especially after such evil, foolish talk about his benefactor, Elijah Muhammad, in trying to rob him of the divine glory which Allah has bestowed upon him. Such a man as Malcolm is worthy of death. This was only two months before he was shot down. That is why people believe that you were responsible for the death of Malcolm X. No, not at all. My name was not among those no. at that time who were considered no. the players. Nonetheless, following those editorials, Malcolm and his family received numerous death threats from whom no one knows for sure. Are you not, perhaps, afraid of what might happen to you as a result of making these revelations? Oh, yes. I probably am a dead man already. But Farrakhan says that Elijah Muhammad had issued a warning to his followers. Leave Minister Malcolm alone. Those were orders, those were instructions to us. Leave this man alone. But in February of 1965, while the family was asleep, Malcolm's home in New York was firebombed. And just one week later, 39-year-old Malcolm X was gunned down by members of the Nation of Islam. But there are those who still believe the government had a hand in Malcolm's death. Fact is, for years, the FBI and the New York City police had Malcolm X under surveillance. Just seven years ago, he was still charging that Malcolm had deserved punishment. And if we dealt with him like a nation deals with a traitor, what the hell business is it of you? But now, Louis Farrakhan, recuperating from prostate cancer and facing his own mortality, has a different appreciation of Malcolm X, and he wanted Atala Shabazz to know it. He did most of the talking during our four-hour meeting. Finally, Shabazz could no longer hold back 35 years of anguish. Indeed, the FBI probably had something to do with it. But we have to say that adult men between the ages of 20 and 40, black faces, who chose to put a trigger in their hands and unload until it was empty, have to be culpable. You can't keep pointing the finger because this was, my father was not killed from a grassy knoll. And I have sisters who are spun out into this environment as tumbleweed, unhealed. We knew to stay silent because as a child, I thought it could happen to me. That if I spoke up or said something, they'd take my mother, they'd take one of us. I got to hear reports of the traitor deserved it, so it never could go away. Those reports didn't come from the government. Those reports did not come from the police. They came from the tan and brown and black faces that once claimed themselves as family members.